The first paper that we are going to review in this video is called Predicting Social Anxiety from Global Positioning System Traces of College Students Feasibility Study. It was published in JMIR Mental Health Track and it was published from University of Virginia. The corresponding author for this paper is Dr. Barnes. First, let's break down the title. It is apparent that the main input that they are using in their methodology is GPS traces. It is used to predict some measure of social anxiety. Its cohort is college students. And the idea is to predict the feasibility of predicting social anxiety using GPS traces. Meaning whether or not tracking someone's location through time can tell us anything about whether or not they are at high risk for social anxiety. The main background information for this project is that social anxiety is a common problem uh, amongst uh, college students. And the traditional methodologies which rely on self-reports are subject to several problems such as recall bias and uh, the fact that visiting a clinic requires a high level of motivation. And they want to use this collected location data to provide a method that can serve as an alternative to these traditional approaches. The objective is to assess whether or not it is feasible to leverage non-invasive mobile sensing technology to passively assess college students' social anxiety levels. Some details about their approach is that their cohort consists of 228 undergraduate participants from a Southeast American university. Assessments have been made regarding their social anxiety using self-report instruments and at a baseline laboratory session. Location tracking was done using an application that was installed on participants' personal mobile phones and the duration of the study was for two weeks. And the objective was to assess any relationship between their social anxiety levels and movement patterns in the college campus environment. The types of features that have been utilized and derived from these location data were cumulative staying time, distribution of visits, location entropy, and transition frequency. The correlation between these features and the social anxiety score were, was the, uh, one of the main points that was studied in this article. Lastly, they proposed a neural network-based prediction model, which is able to use these daily mobile features, which are extracted from location information, to predict social anxiety symptoms. Their results indicated that there is a lot of information embedded in the location information that can be utilized in order to make accurate prediction regarding levels of social anxiety. For instance, they showed that location entropy was negatively associated with social anxiety, with these correlation measures, which qualitatively and intuitively uh, translates to that socially anxious students were found to avoid public area and engage in less leisure activities during evenings and on the weekends. When it comes to predicting the high or low socially anxious level, the model was able to do this with the accuracy of 85%. And in regressing the social anxiety score that they used, on a scale of 0 to 80, it was done with a root mean square error of 7.06, which leads to the conclusion that such data is useful for assessing social anxiety levels. Social anxiety was defined in the beginning of the introduction section. The definition reads, social anxiety is marked by an extreme fear of being scrutinized and judged by others in social or performance situations. They go over some of the impacts of social anxiety and why, is it, why it is important to study it, bring references regarding how widespread of a problem social anxiety is, and go over why the traditional approaches in this domain are not typically 100% adequate. Then they talk about the fact that when it comes to mental health symptoms, in addition to subjective methods such as self-report surveys and interviews, there's also the objective methods, which is basically going over the physiological variables such as heart rate. And again mention why survey-based studies are not necessarily good enough. For instance, they mentioned the participation burden as another reason why switching to passive sensing data for assessing mental health status uh, can be beneficial. Next, they talk about the same input that they have used in this work, which is the GPS traces. They mentioned that it is used for a lot of mental health tasks, such as predicting bipolar disorder, anxiety, depression, and some other health-related tasks, such as Alzheimer's disease and dementia. They also mentioned references providing evidence that location-based features can be used to assess depression and anxiety levels. 
These evidences, along with the fact that social anxiety is marked by intense fear of social scrutiny, are mentioned by the article as reasons why intuitively it makes sense and it is plausible to assume that passively sensed location information may reveal key markers that can be used to detect high distress levels and in this case indicate information about social anxiety levels of the individuals. The main things that were done in this article was step one, recruiting the participants, step two, collecting the GPS information, uh, basically doing the two weeks of data along with self-reported data and activity recognition results. Third, assessing the participant's mental health status clinically. Fourth, extracting meaningful features from these location data. And fifth, correlating these features and uh, metrics along with the participant's mental health status. They mentioned that the main aim of this paper was to explore a framework for using passively collected GPS data and related to the social anxiety levels of the individuals. Next, they talk about their cohort. It was mentioned that their cohort were mainly undergraduate students with varying social anxiety levels. Regarding the reasons for their choice of cohort, they mentioned these two. One, there are high social anxiety levels among young adults, and two, recruiting young adults in a university setting provides a relatively homogeneous sample in terms of life phase, psychological stresses, and life experiences. So anxiety is important in such cohort, and such cohort can limit the amounts of conf confounding variables that one has to deal with. Participants were 228. These 228 participants were recruited through an IRB approved study. Their social anxiety level was assessed using Social Interaction Anxiety Scale, SIAS in a pre-study screening. They installed a mobile app on their systems, meaning their personal handheld devices, and passively collected GPS location every 150 seconds uh, and during a two-week study. Their backend was an Amazon uh, AWS S3 server. Once they have these raw GPS data, they use a clustering algorithm and the OpenStreetMap geodatabase in order to parse semantic locations from these raw location data. The idea is to eliminate the intermediate locations and to determine the number of clusters or important places automatically. They shed more light on the details of this in this paragraph. Before we continue, this is the overview of their system. Individual will use their own uh, handheld devices and the information such as GPS data and activity recognition will be sensed here and will be stored in an Amazon AWS uh, S3 storage system. Then these raw GPS data will be parsed using the algorithm and clustered into important locations such as education, home, other houses, things like that. These semantic locations will then be used in a feature extraction block and features such as location entropy, transition frequency, and things like that will be extracted from them, which will then be used in a correlation analysis and through a predictive modeling system to relate them to the individual social anxiety level that was originally assessed via SIAS scale. The algorithm is also shown here, and to see an overview of how it operates, you can see that here you have a lot of uh, location readings and the clustering algorithm has determined that these locations are intermediary so they are removed and then these two clustered locations will be mapped to these two centers which are then mapped based on the geodatabase to two specific campus locations. All in all they are going from information to knowledge regarding individuals locations. They have categorized these semantic locations into these 10 locations and they also describe some more details about these, such as what they do when there is a time gap due to things such as the application being killed in the background and things such as that. Next, they talk about the features that they have used. The first category of features has to do with how much time the user is spent in each location, named cumulative staying time. This mainly indicates the percentage of total time that the individual has it spent in one type of location during a specific time window. This time window could be afternoons, mornings, or during the day. The next group of features is distribution of visits. 
consider a specific type of location such as those that were mentioned before for a specific participant, they compute the density distribution of time visits over time of the day. Next, they have location entropy, which inspired by Shannon's uh, information theoretical entropy, measures the uniformity of location distribution. And lastly, they have transition frequencies, which have to do from moving from one location type to another, such as going from home to work. Now let's talk about the results. Here they bring the details of their cohort. Considering the SIAS as a scale to measure social anxiety levels, this is the distribution over their cohort. They break down these categories of features and then investigate the correlations individually. First, starting with the cumulative staying times. The first result is this. They show that the daily time spent in some location has something to do with the SIAS score in terms of correlation. For instance, they mentioned that the time spent in food locations, such as restaurants, was negatively correlated with the assessment of social anxiety level. This, along with the finding that time spent at supermarkets was mostly positively correlated with the assessment of social anxiety, suggests that the people prone to being uh, socially anxious tend to buy more food from supermarkets so they can eat at home and avoid social interactions such as restaurants. They design multiple daily time epochs so as to do a more fine-grained analysis of this information, using which they uh, indicate certain other results using the cumulative staying time feature group. This figure also sheds more light on the correlation results relating to the cumulative staying time features. Along with this table, which has information on this as well. Next, they talk about the distribution of visits. They have done the analysis of the distributions for both high and low SAP participants and report certain distinguishing attributes associated with the distributions from each one of these groups of participants, which they will use to make certain conjectures about these results. This figure sheds more light on these results as well. For instance, you can look at things such as supermarket and other houses, religious, out of town, food, home, and you can see the distributions for the low and high SIAS. High or gray means those that are more prone to being socially anxious. Next, they talk about location entropy, which mainly has to do with the assessment of how many different places people have been uh, visiting. Next, they talk about frequency of transitions and report corresponding results. Here, for instance, Table 2 sheds more light on the Pearson correlation between participants' SIAS score and their transition frequencies. Now, they use all of these feature categories, as well as additional features such as day of the week, and describe their feature vectors, as well as the approaches that they have made uh, to basically deal with the curves of dimensionality, such as principal component analysis. They mention more details about the features, as well as the methodology such as the neural network that they propose for using these features to predict the social anxiety level. Ultimately showing that the task in the article can be efficiently uh, performed using such data and the proposed methodology, as well as the extracted features and feature categories used in this work. Additionally, it is also noteworthy that this work focuses on anxiety uh, which manifests differently from depression, which was a subject of many of the mobile sensing mental health related works.